everybody. Ready? Clap here, we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie Seagal. Welcome to our house. Our home. Our home. Our home. What's the difference? Okay. It's a house, but it's a home. Okay. Well, Who welcome. Are Who are you? Uh, well, I, <laughs> apparently somebody that shouldn't be here right now. No. I'm Kurt Sutter, and uh, this is a, a slice of pie. A slice of pie, because every other week we are going to answer fan questions. And uh, that is what we are doing today. It is what we're doing today. Uh, on, uh, on Reddit, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, on Reddit. Correct. Wait, wait a minute. I'm getting... Yes, on Reddit. So here's the deal. You guys can submit your questions. Right. I'm reading this from the paper. You can submit your questions by email or leave us a voicemail at steak pipe. Speak pipe. Speak pipe. Did I spell oh, it right? No, you didn't spell it right. <laughs> at uh, steak oh, pipe. My. Speak speak pipe. I like Sorry. steak pipe. No, it's speak, it's speak pipe. So that's what you can do to get us your questions. Yes, reach out to steak pie. Pipe. Pipe. Steak pipe. Steak pipe. pipe. Speak pipe. Speak pipe. Right. We will what? answer. Uh, to the best of our ability. And apparently this week, we're doing a very special episode of Slice of Pie with the Sons of Anarchy subreddit. Oh. The Sons of Anarchy subreddit. So. Do you know about subreddits? No. No. Mm. There's Reddit, which is, you know, oh, I'm going to go look something up at Reddit. Then there's the subreddit, which is underneath Reddit. A deeper dive? Oh, man. It is unbelievable what happens on subreddits. Oh, here we go. Hi, Katie. Thank you for doing this AMA. To Kurt, it's rumored that there was a plot on Sons of a love triangle between Shax, Tara, and David Hale. If Taylor Sheridan didn't leave the show, it's been mentioned several times on this sub that Sheriff Roosevelt's character was supposed to be what David Hale should have been. So was there a love triangle with Taylor Sheridan's character and Jax and Tara? I, uh... No, the the initial conceit of Taylor's character was really a little bit of good cop, bad cop with uh, Unser, meaning Unser was knew the history of the town, he, he knew Clay, there was understanding, and and Taylor's character was more of a straight shooter, um, you know. Better, more uh, higher higher education, and was going to play it straight. I believe we played some sort of love interest with um, Ali Walker's character. Uh, uh, with uh, that was Taylor Sheridan. Yeah, yeah, that first season. She was there the first season, or the yeah, uh, uh-uh. wasn't it? No, Ali wasn't there the first season. Not the was the second, but I think Hale left in season three. Well, oh, I died in episode three, I think. I can't believe I remember this. I thought he left in season two. He asked in, I think he, he left, left in, in season two. He left in season two. Yeah. No, it was the first episode of season two, but who am I? What was he? Who is? Somebody. There was somebody. Uh, uh, I forget what it was. There was something, but um, I don't think because we were playing the, the triangle with uh the character that jay carnes played cone so i i can't imagine that there was anything on the table at that point with um taylor's character um so i think that is uh that is uh, not true um uh but he was going to be you know initially more of uh, a law enforcement antagonist uh, for our our folk. Roosevelt was he supposed to have the love thing with Tara? Um, I don't think so. We were trying to get Tara to hook up. Yeah, uh, no, everyone, <laughs> everyone else wants to, everyone else wants Tara getting laid. Apparently, uh, um, wasn't he? We had him. Uh, wasn't he married yes, or? He down, yeah, yeah, yeah more right. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I think. We yeah, did, yeah. yeah. The flower, the, the flower shop. The flower shop. That's right. Yeah. So no, right. we um no nobody was trying to fuck Tara. What's going on? 
Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, I'll ask one of mine own though, any chance we'll ever get more from the Suns universe in the future? And how did you like the ending for the Mayans MC? Hmm. Um, uh, here's the truth. I uh, Traditionally, I never watch uh, an episode of uh, anything I do once I leave the soundstage, um, meaning I don't watch my own episodes on television. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't really, uh, obviously, uh, creatively uh, a little bit for season three. Um, uh, but uh, after that, um, uh, not really connected. So I honestly um, uh, did not watch uh, Mayans. Um, and not for any other reason other than I felt like at that point um, it uh, it was Elgin sh it was Elgin's show, and uh, uh, and I kind of wanted his world to live separately and my and my mythology that that uh, you know uh, spawned that to also live separately and uh, and I I have no idea quite honestly how mine's ended but. Um, uh, as far as more sons, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's challenging. Uh, Disney Would you be open to doing it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, look, I, I think I've said this already. I have, uh, 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 John Landgraf and I, uh, are probably closer now than we've ever been. Uh, because he doesn't have to put up with me in a professional capacity, um, and uh, I love the guy, and uh, and the same goes with Dana. But uh, but you know it's uh, it's it's challenging for me to to obviously uh, work uh, at Disney, and they own the IP. So uh, look, uh, I'd never say never to any of that. But currently, it is uh, uh, there is nothing uh, on the horizon. Very diplomatic. Thank you. My lawyer would be proud. You absolutely. <laughs> no H. No H. R. Uh, Walling. Yeah. Tady, uh, congrats on getting a new role in the new Sophie Turner-led thriller Trust. Haven't you started shooting yet? And can you give us any details on your character? Yes, actually, I just returned yesterday from Mexico City. I did a block, and then I'm going to go back in a couple of weeks. I love my character. I get to play. I am a um, pet rescue lady. <laughs> and it kind of intertwines. It, it, the, the movie is a thriller with some comic stuff about it. So I'm sort of the um, the lighter part of the story. I come, uh, I, um, Sophie goes through a whole bunch of stuff. That's what I'll say. It's really a, a good script. And then I sort of, um, I find her dog. That's what I'll say. Because I don't know how much I'm supposed to, you know, we're just shooting it now. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been really fun. Thank you for asking about that. Kurt and Katie can't even begin to say how much of a fan and an admirer I am. The show is perfect beginning to end, in my opinion. I'm actually getting my first tattoo today and it's of the Reaper. K Sut, all the time, money, thought, and work put into the show was not done lightly however looking back on it now is there anything you would have done different with any storylines or just with anything about the show in general um would i've done anything differently no 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 um you know a, a process uh, process is process and i feel like um the direction uh, i got to the point where i understood how the story um best unfolded and and uh i would come in with a general sense of each season and then really let the scripts and the characters and the relationships kind of figure out how we get there and uh and i feel uh i was able to be true to that and that's and everything story-wise that went down uh was what uh was supposed to happen so, uh, you know, there's some of my own behavioral challenges. I, I may have, you know, make adjustments. <laughs> yeah, some things that perhaps were better, you know. I'm going to say something there, though, because overall, you're a great boss. Well, thank you. I concur. Yeah. 
the threat. We've all had experience with you as a boss, right. and you are a great boss. Thank you. A mentor, I would say. Ah, you're going too far. No, my sister, I will say this, my sister was a writer in season, I don't know, two and three, she was in yeah, the room? Yeah, I think so. And she always talks about how Kurt was um, as much a mentor and a teacher as a great writer. In other words, she she just learned a lot from you. Mm. And so I always, I think that that is, um, and I've heard that from more than just my sister. <laughs> so... It's not just a familial yeah. thing. Yeah, well, I have employed half your family. So. <laughs> and one for the queen. Oh, you're playing such an amazing and intricate character on the show. Is there anything you learned about yourself in your years as Gemma? Oh, that's interesting. Anything I learned about myself? Well, I will say this as as an actor. Um, I felt challenged, which was something that I was hoping to find because to continue to be an actor, I think you have to stay interested and I think you have to um, be able to uh, push yourself. And so um, Sons gave me the opportunity personally to to to, to deepen my my, I hate to say this, it sounds so corny, but my artistic expression. And um, what I learned about myself, um, what did I learn? You mean by playing Gemma? Well, I don't know, you know, I uh, never use a gun. Don't hit anybody with a skateboard. Uh, what else? I mean, I think her motives were very well-intentioned. Uh, her means were something that uh, I don't know if that taught me about myself. I guess it would taught me what not to do <laughs> in certain maternal situations. What I find interesting is that uh, perhaps before Gemma, uh, there wasn't a sense of people maybe being a little afraid of you. Oh, you know what I mean? And now, like, you know, like, I, I, I literally have friends to this day, dudes, who are like, dude, I don't want to piss off your wife. Yeah, but that's not something but that I'm happy about. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that's that, part, that I know, yeah, not that you learn, but in terms of... What did I learn? Would it, you know, it also manifested a sense of... You know, well, that was the perception of other people. Exactly. I, I don't want to say that I decide. I suddenly got really vicious. No, no, you <laughs> didn't. But I'm the perception of you. You know, and you know, and I think you took advantage of that. How? I mean, in my <laughs> real life, how did I take advantage of that? That's a crazy thing to say. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I did not. You didn't. You're the opposite of that. Oh. I can turn it on and off. I know. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. So I can talk about personal experience that I have had, not so much anymore, but a lot of social anxiety, mm. which means that um, I can feel uh, uncomfortable and disconnected when I'm in a crowd. And one of the things that has really helped me with that is therapy. It's given me the self-awareness to build a social life and and not be afraid to be a part of. Does that make sense? Yeah. That was fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, here's why we're glad and happy to have these folks uh, on board with us and support us, is we are both advocates of mental health help. You know, whether it's long-term and intense, whether it's, you know, sometimes for me, therapy is... You know, I'll be in a pocket I can't get out of, and it's, you know, I'll go in and dip in for six months or whatever and figure some shit out. And what's really great about BetterHelp is that it's very convenient. You can find somebody online that you feel safe and comfortable speaking to, and it's a wonderful service that wasn't around when I started therapy. Mm -hmm. So I had to do a lot of knocking on doors and sitting in people's couches. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash pi to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash pi. P-I-E. P-I-E. And last question for y'all. Can we look for a prop sale anytime soon? I know Charlie and Theo took most of the stuff from set, but I'm dying huh. my hands on some real sand crow rock uh. Um, God. They did? I didn't know they took stuff. Yeah. Oh, Charlie took everything. Charlie like, took everything? Oh Charlie took his cut? I know they got their cuts. Um, I don't, I didn't get anything. I got a coat. I got Gemma's coat from the very first season. But I'm not giving that up. I can't, we're, we're, I think I'm even out of merch. Like, I don't even, I used to. We couldn't find it. Yeah, because we would get every, uh, Every um, department would usually generate some sort of swag for um, their department at the end of the season. So it would be like lighting crew, stones of you know, and uh, uh, and every and we would I would get one of those from every department every year. And, and even that stuff, I think I've given all away over the past. We've given away a five school shares. Years. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think we have much left. Yeah, go buy it. <laughs> um the last day of shooting we all went back to the stages and i remember i ordered pizza for everyone and charlie stayed till the sun ri- the sun rose by himself because he wanted to say goodbye to his character oh charlie charlie it was really emotional that day yeah it was an emotional day i had to leave Aww. i could i couldn't handle it i mean you gave me the card to be like buy pizza for them <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go <laughs> kurt why did you delete your Twitter account? Was it just because Elon Musk bought the company? We'll start there because he asked three questions. Yeah, I, look, I, I have a love-hate relationship with social media uh, and that I appreciate it and understand the power and the weight of it. Uh, uh, and one could argue the importance of it. But I also, uh, you know, see the... Uh, the downside, uh, the, you know, and, uh, uh, and so some of it was just reducing, uh, uh, what it, to what I actually needed, meaning, um, you know, pretty much everything I was doing at that point was, uh, uh I could do through my Instagram account, uh, which I, uh, was much more active on. And then I think when the whole uh, Musk thing happened, and the was it gonna was it gonna stay? Was it gonna go? Was he gonna be like there was there was just so much noise around it? It just seemed like all right, now's the time to sort of uh, 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 divest and uh, keep it simple, and uh, and and that's when I uh, deleted it. So, uh, it was, so it wasn't like straight up political or, or as much as it was, uh, it, it, uh, it, uh, solidified the timing to, uh, uh, to downsize. The next question is, will we ever get the shield movie in 2030 inside joke? <laughs> question. 2030. Um, uh, uh, Inside joke that I am not in on <laughs> uh, must 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 be a reference to uh, something in the show. Um, I, you know that is not my question to answer. That's Sean's question, and uh, uh, there were different conversations over the years about that would be so cool about you know where is Vic at now and how would Vic navigate the current climate of law enforcement especially in los angeles or, or any really any urban center um but uh um uh you know i am uh i would be excited to uh to see that movie but uh, i'm not the person to uh to ask that question would would you kurt work with sean ryan again on the night agent perhaps next season um i love sean ryan i would all, absolutely work with sean ryan again um but uh, uh, 
Sean Ryan doesn't need me. On I was going to say, it's, it's like the most pretty good. It's the most popular show on Netflix. Why fuck it up and bring me on? No, stop. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, 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 but yeah, I adore Sean. It would be those fun. guys have all remained close. All the Shield guys, yeah, really have. Yeah, which is the Shield writers, which is great. I butt dialed Chick Eggly the other day, and he called. And like he and called me back later on this afternoon. It was like I was like, why is Chick calling me? And I see him the thing. And then I then I looked at my phone. I was like, oh, I butt dialed him at eight a.m. Apparently. <laughs> okay, hey Kurt and Katie, Tara's character sparks significant discussion on this Reddit page. She really does, actually. Personally, I find her character captivating. Appreciating the depth she brings to the series. Despite this, some po- posts equate her actions with those of Jax and Gemma suggesting she deserved her fate due to her association with Jax. It's a complex debate highlighting the intricacies of character dynamics and moral ambiguity within the show. What are your thoughts on Tara? Wow. I haven't thought about Tara since Um, we left the work. uh, Um, Tara, Tara. Here's what I would say. I would say that on the page, that character's complexity was about a five. Through Maggie's performance, it became a 10 or a 12. Yeah. Uh, she's just such a nuanced actress, and um, and uh, and I can understand that performance uh, stirring up these kinds of uh, uh, questions. But look, did she deserve that fate? Of course not. Did uh, she, uh, you know... Being in that world and being in love with uh, Jax, knowing who he was and what his uh, existential challenge was, having children with him, uh, was it inevitable? Yeah. Hey, Katie, is the Married with Children animated series still happening? Well, (laughs) sadly... uh, I would like to say yes, but it's been passed on. I think it was. Too, I think it's too expensive. I think. I mean, I don't know if you're. Whatever. It. Um, we all signed on to do it. All four of us. Which uh, everybody's always asking us if we're going to do a reboot. So we tried, but the last I heard was was no. It was not moving forward. It will now, thanks to Reddit. <laughs> Kurt, I'm very excited for the new pilot series, The Abandons. Jillian Anderson and Lena Headey are powerhouse castings. And the first time I've seen you cast two leading women as a showrunner. Kurt, did you write the pilot series with these two specifically in mind? Or was that a decision made by the casting agency? Um, Thank you. And uh, uh, no, I don't uh, I don't ever really write the. you know, with with the exception of uh, a, like a movie like Southpaw that was initially for Marshall Mathers, obviously then I had a specific person in mind, uh, even though it went in a different direction. Uh, I, I don't usually uh, write with anybody specific in mind. Um, uh, not for any reason like it, it, other than in I'm usually discovering who the person is as I'm writing and the person uh, I, I, I know at the start um, uh, usually changes and becomes uh, more complex and sometimes wholly different than the person that ends up being uh, uh, in, the, in a final draft. Uh, so... Uh, so no, I did not have those two women in mind. However, they, uh, uh, you know, when we were, when I knew who they were, uh, who the characters were, and we were looking at who, uh, potentially would be our matriarchs, uh, they were, uh, both at the top of my list. And I will say that I initially, uh, well, you know what? I'm not. This won't make any sense until you actually see the show. So uh, they were both at the top of my list, and uh, uh, and 
the fact that we had them both sign on uh, ultimately is, uh, yeah, I still... Uh, it's going to be great. Pinch, you know, pinch myself a little bit, but, uh, you know, yeah. but I uh, feel very grateful. Katie, any fun behind the scenes moment you can share from the Connors? No, the fun stuff really happens when we're shooting it because they're a very good bunch of actors. You know, John Goodman and Laurie Metcalf, Lisi, um, and Sarah. It's just, um, it's a fun place to hang out for a while. That's what I would say. And they've been doing it so long, it's kind of like... A well-oiled... Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Great. Kurt and Katie, huge fan of you both, and can't begin to tell you how much you guys are appreciated around here. They don't want taking the time to do the AMA. My question, were there any other actors you really wanted to have on the show but just couldn't make it work? Whether it be a guest spot or a regular, I've seen a few posts on here asking which actors would have been a great fit for SOA and just curious to know your thoughts. Thanks. We actually wanted uh, Dre. Uh, I don't know if we officially made an offer, but we wanted him for, uh, I just thought it would be cool to have Dre play a cop. <laughs> um, and uh, um, for Roosevelt. Um, and also, here's this is going to sound... Uh, like an odd connection, but my the initial conceit of the character of Nero was not necessarily as a love interest for Gemma. It was more of a kind of like an Opie uh, character, and I really wanted Jack Houston. Uh, I was such a fan of Boardwalk Empire and his character, and he's such a great actor and a lovely guy, and. Uh, and we just and and Jack loved the idea, but we just couldn't make it work. Boardwalk was, you know, in the throes of its success, and then um, uh, and then, you know, as as it usually happens, and for the right reasons, uh, the the uh, the need for that character changed over the course of uh, the 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 season, and uh, uh, and he ultimately became more of an OG, and then there was the opportunity to. Uh, uh, to bring him, uh, make a more of an impact with him uh, as a father figure and make him part of Gemma's world. And clearly the, the more powerful choice uh, and more original choice. And, and then getting Jimmy Smith was just, you know. Who has the most extensive hair care routine? You both look amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, my perspective is Kurt has a very... Uh, it's not true. No, you don't think? I wash my hair you, once a month. Yeah, but you have a lot of products up there. I have one product. Oh. Or okay. two products. Who are all those bottles belong to? My, my hair takes some maintenance because I have to color it, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple... But you also wash your hair almost every day. I do not. I do not wash my hair almost every day. How often do you wash your hair? Probably two or three times a week. Okay. See, I once a month, whether it needs it or not, he'll wash his hair. And otherwise, I just slap some shit on it and put it in a bun. Oh, okay. I mean, do I go and then have a trim and some highlights and do I do all that stuff? That sounds wholly emasculating. <laughs> absolutely. But yes, absolutely. He's very, what is, what's that word? Um, what's the word for? Oh, don't ask me. Grooming. Uh, uh, manscaping? Not manscaping. Yeah, Even though that's, a, that's, yeah. good, that's part of the grooming. grooming. No, it's, um, um, I can't think of the word now. Metrosexual? Met, no, not metrosexual. <laughs> but. Maybe that is the word. Is that the word when you're a dude that really takes care of himself? There's a lot of self-care that goes on there. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Just he plans on releasing new original music. I love your album. Yeah, oh. Katie. What about some music? I don't know. You know, here's how I think about it. I, I, it's just... Um, it's something I love, love, love to do, which is to play music. But I have, uh, ever since the pandemic, it was impossible for me to um, 
it's not impossible. But the the band that I play with are all people that actually make a living doing this. And to get everybody together is difficult. Um, Bob and I, I make all my records with Bob Field, who did the music on the Suns. Uh, I actually introduced Bob to Kurt, so I take credit. But um, I haven't really, uh, we haven't spoken about it. And what I have been sort of toying with is I made this one record, the very first record I made was on a on Virgin Records, and I would love to re um, jigger some of those songs and re-release them. Mm. And that I think would be really interesting to do. So uh, I'm kind of looking into that. So maybe, but as far as uh, what was, this, music, was the name of that album? Well, well, it's called Well. It's impossible to find, except maybe in the bargain basement somewhere. But um, mm. There's some good music on there that I felt um, sort of got, you know, looked over because of the Peg Bundy of it all. It was a period of time when it was very difficult to cross over from acting to music. So it was hard to be taken seriously. And I was really proud of that record. So I would, I'd love to re-release some of it. Mm -hmm. Here's another question for you. Who's tougher, Gemma or Leela? Love you both. Thanks for Leela is a big mush. I mean, that's Leela's whole deal is that she's hard exterior, but she's really lonely and soft and mushy on the inside. That's why Fry likes her so much. So I don't, I don't think of Leela as tough. I think she's tough at her job. You know, she's in charge of the spacecraft, mm. the, the plant, you know, the spaceship. Um, and Gemma. I think she has a soft, mushy side, but I think she'd covered it up for so long that um, I think she's a tough ass. She's a, the, I, I, yeah, 100%. Gemma's the tougher one. Kurt, what's up with the mommy issues? <laughs> what? Oh, because of the, uh, all the, the matriarchs and the... Um, um, he writes really well for women. I, I do, and I don't know what this says. Uh... Honestly, I think it's more daddy issues than it is mommy issues, but um, but that's for a different day. Uh, I, I turn to our podcast if you want to hear about yeah, that stuff. Yeah, um, I um, uh, I don't know. I it, it's really interesting. The women on Sons were uh, very much written as they were in the world uh, as uh, support for members. And unlike the uh, Italian mafia, who, where the women, you know, may have been very aware of what was going on, they were completely detached and, um, uh, and, uh, and played a different uh, role. Whereas more often than not, uh, you know, uh, not perhaps to the extent, obviously, that, that Gemma ultimately did, but they were more uh, of use, I should say, uh, to, uh, to members, um, the old ladies. And uh, um, so what ended up happening is these two characters in the sort of Shakespeare Hamlet of it all um, – both uh, uh, the uh, Gertrude character and uh, and ultimately the Ophelia character uh, uh, were really impactful voices, uh, and uh, and and much of what our men did spun off of uh, their either responses or uh, you know or reacting to their actions. So. They ended up being really these stronger characters that uh, was not my intention going in, uh, but I, I've always been able to write uh, women pretty well and uh, maybe better than I do male characters. Uh, uh, but um, How does that relate to your mommy issues? 
Well, I, that's what I mean. I don't know if it's mommy issues more than it, it's more daddy issues. That that it's more dif- not difficult to write men. Yeah, or like a male point of view. Exactly. Like I understand almost a female point of view. Uh, uh, I bet that's because you grew up with sisters. And yeah, I was sort of raised by women. Yeah, more so. More than, so. You know, uh, I mean, my dad was around, and and uh, uh, you know, the relationship was was challenging. Uh, in, in, in some ways, but uh, I, I think I was much more influenced uh, and felt safer in, uh, in that environment. So I, I, I think I uh, heard more and uh, understood what they more. say when you're dating somebody, you want to understand what their relationship to their mother or their father was, that that's an important thing. Mm. And he... Um, he had complex relationships with both, but I think closer to mom than yeah. dad, yeah. for sure. Which was important. <laughs> Katie, what was your favorite song to record during Sons? Oh. That's a good question. Well, I love To Sir With Love. That was great. Um, and then we all, we did a Sly Stone song. What was the Sly Stone song we did? Um, uh, where we all took verses. But we was it? Uh, was it? Not oh, really? everyday people. Everyday people. Everyday people. That was uh, that was fun. Most of them were fun. I I loved that he that Kurt had me sing a song every season. That was really that was uh, was really great. Thank you. One of my favorite songs was. It is one of my favorite songs, in general, in 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 the world of songs. songs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite of your covers, which was a bird on a wire, Lad Cohen, who, you know, we had to get permission, obviously, from from the, from him to do the song, and and I don't think he actually watched the episode, but he, I'm sure, he heard the recording. And uh, uh, and and sent an email saying how much he liked my version of it. So that was really thrilling. Crazy! Oh my so god! Amazing. I completely I don't know where I, where that is, but um, it's on a server somewhere. Somewhere, but yeah, that was very exciting. That was uh, that was highly complimentary. I'm a huge Larry Cohen mm. fan. So yeah, that was great. It was cool. I mean, we. Um, at least three or four of his songs that were the probably the course of the the series. Yeah. yeah. So to have him say that that was great. It's really cool. If you could have chose what went down between you and Agent Stahl in the house, what would you have chosen differently? You know what? I don't even remember what went down. I mean, all I remember I, is you punching I, I her in the her. crotch. You know, this is a this is where the fans are so important because you guys are so much w- more informed. Like I was just saying, I do a job and I pretty much leave the job. I don't, you know, I've watched the series, but I I I couldn't tell you what happened twelve years ago or whatever it's been now. Do you remember? What would I have done different? Um, I love Allie Walker, so I probably we probably would have giggled or well, laughed. You, I know you didn't kill her because we know how that happened. Um, oh yes, that I, I do remember. I do, I do. Re- I just remember you, you punching her in the crotch, and then I, and uh, I forget what happens. Yeah, I don't. So remember. and yeah, so they there you go. To the, they should go to Theo and Tink's um, Kim or Theo and Kim's podcast because they apparently go episode by episode into depth. deep into deep dives yes do you think Jax was a good father and that his choice at the end was really made with the best interest of his kids in mind oh that's deep um uh i do i think uh uh i think Jax was a good father i think Jax's intent was to uh be a good father and I think his choice at the end, uh, which he 
I think on some level believed that his father made the same choice, that, uh, that the same struggle that he had with choosing between legacy and what's best for family um, was a challenging one. And one that for him, he came to the realization that he couldn't do both. Uh, so the ending wasn't just about ending him. It was about ending the connection to that legacy, the connection to the outlaw way of life, um, which is why he tells Wendy, do not um, romanticize who I am. You tell these kids every horrible fucking thing I've ever done so they never come looking for it. Oh. And, uh, and that's his way of putting an end to what he feels perhaps uh, was a fate that he didn't want his children to have. I would agree with that 100%. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of self-sacrifice. Maybe I should get back into therapy. <laughs> Charlie Hunnam. As Jax is a revelation, how did you know he was the guy for the job? Um, what a great question to end on. I would say, you know, finding a leading man is, uh, uh, or a leading woman is, 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 uh, it's always challenging because you are serving many masters in terms of network and studio and demographic and uh, there there are so many people that have an agenda uh in that decision for different reasons and uh and of course my reasons lean into who is best for the character and uh um and we looked at a lot of dudes and all some really amazing actors and um and none of them really check the box for me uh and and i forget who uh, how charlie's name came into the mix but i remember watching uh green street hooligans and seeing charlie and there was uh, a charisma uh, a beauty about him that was wholly masculine yet uh the the fragility was like right there and uh and i just was like that's our fucking guy how do we get him and i didn't know where he was i didn't know if he was living in london and i knew nothing about uh you know practically uh, about who he, you know where he was uh, you know his availability and uh um and we tracked him down and he was in Los Angeles and he was primarily writing at that point of view and had no interest in doing television, which he will, he's talked about many times and was screaming at his agents for even sending him a, a TV script to read and uh, not screaming, but like, you know, I guess he was clear in terms of what he wanted to do and uh, and luckily, he uh, he picked it up and gave it a read, and uh, and liked the writing, and we had a chat, and uh, and then he checked the boxes for everybody. He checked the box for Landgraf. He checked the box for studio, um, and uh, um, and uh, you know, it's it's that old. Ad. It sounds so cheesy, and it's. Hollywood like to go that kid's gonna be a star right but it was so clear to me like when I saw Charlie sort of swagger in that uh, those first few episodes um, not because of the show I didn't know if that character 
would be any kind of vehicle for him in terms of moving his career forward. But I knew that he just had that thing, you know. And he's such a sweet boy. He's so sweet. They fell in love. We fell in love. They really did. It's a good bromance. It is. Well, that's it for today. Zip. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have a question for us. Any question. Any question. Well, we'll decide. Well, okay. <laughs> or, or perhaps there's a limit to the question. But if you do, submit it to us at either inkbox at sutterinc.com or... Just leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com. <laughs> Sorry, that's the say first that time I've said that. Can you say that without a question? Leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash pi podcast. That was a lot. That's a lot. I know. How are they going to remember that? Speakpipe.com slash pi podcast. I think we got it. <laughs>